Here's Miriam's audience of five. I am the fourth person I'm recording. Go ahead. So I'll be talking to you guys about the history of Egypt from its past to its current culture. I'm an Egyptian female who came to America when I was very young and my parents are also Egyptian. They passed down their culture even though moving from culture, uh, even though moving from uh, country to country. So growing up, we have taken history classes where it is common for us to learn about ancient Egypt. But have you actually wondered about the current culture? So first I'll be talking to you guys about the history of Egypt. And Olimi says how history is seen as memories for those current in society. Hieroglyphs are symbols and their form of uh, language. Hieroglyphs are also very prevalent and present inside these pyramids. Ancient Egyptians used to believe that these hieroglyphs can help the mummified pharaohs with their passage to, to the afterlife. Joshua Mark Edward Wendt uh, also states how hieroglyphs have survived in the form of Coptic. Coptic is not a very common language, however, it is used amongst Coptic, uh, Coptic Christians, which are, which are very uh, prevalent in, um, in Egypt. Joshua Mark also states how these structures and the Giza and the pyramids are a form of uh, conservative society. What this really means is that there's a certain structure, an exact way of going about things. So when looking at this, you can see it through their, their buildings because they have a certain way of going about it and it doesn't go against their norm. So now I'll be talking to you guys about their current culture and I'll start, to start talking to you guys about the dress code between females. Females tend to dress more modestly and more conservative, conservatively. They tend to cover their shoulders and below their knees since it is an Islamic dominant country. Greetings between males tend to be handshakes or if it's familiar, it would be the one handshake with a pat over the hug. For females, for females, it is a kiss from cheek to cheek. I'll bring my mom up to show you guys a an example of how this goes. <laughs> so that is how it is done in Egypt. Arang Galabeas are also very common in Egypt. There are long dresses that men uh, usually wear and they're ten they tend to be light colored, which helps, uh, like helps with keeping them cool since it does not attract the sun. Arranged marriages, um, I'll be talking to you guys about arranged marriages, which helps uh, going to the culture of families. So arranged marriages are very common. Women are, tend to be uh, inferior to men. If a female tends to act out of the norm or rebel, it is seen as the family did not do well with raising her well. So this comes back to the idea of conservative society. So. You can think of it as she acted out of the norm, she is now looked down upon. So now we can look at the small businesses. You, do, you guys don't really see Walmarts, Publix, Kroger's in the non-city areas. You see small, you see small stores. And they tend to be below apartments. So they are very accessible to people. Tuk-tuks, tuk-tuks are also very common. There is one way on the front, two in the back, and it can be seen as a form of transportation. So in New York, it is common for you to go and just call for a taxi to go from destination to destination. In Egypt, you can call on a tuk-tuk to go from one place to another. So, so you do see mosques all around Egypt. During Ramadan, you do hear prayers late at night, early in the morning. And when looking at hospitality, uh, when first seeing somebody coming over to their houses, they tend to greet you more with food. And if you do not eat the food, it is seen as disrespect for they do not have an abundant amount. So now I have talked to you guys about the history of Egypt from its past to its present current culture. Thank you. Okay, here's the five of us. Again. Oh, here's him. Okay, bye. <laughs>